discussion on ventricular tachycardia in structurally normal heart vt in structurally normal heart constitutes about 10% of patients with ventricular tachycardia echocardiogram and coronary angiograms are normal in these cases but mri may show subtle abnormalities please subscribe to this channel for future updates click on the subscribe button press the bell icon after that for all updates localized sympathetic denervation may be seen in some of them baseline ecg is normal in many situations following are the main types of vt with structurally normal heart one right ventricular outflow tract vt two left ventricular outflow tract vt three idiopathic left ventricular tachycardia four catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia 5 ventricular tachycardia in brugada syndrome 6 ventricular tachycardia in long qt syndrome the first three are monomorphic vt while the latter three are polymorphic in nature right ventricular outflow tract vt is a wide qrs tachycardia with lbbb pattern and inferior axis it occurs in third to fifth decade and constitutes about 90% of outflow vts there are two types non sustained repetitive variety and paroxysmal exercise induced sustained variety both are terminated by adenosine in contrast from vt in arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia exercise stress testing is used to initiate and evaluate rvot vt initiation depends on a critical heart rate which differs in each patient mri may show abnormalities of right ventricle in up to 70% which include focal thinning diminished systolic wall thickening and abnormal wall motion differential diagnosis of rvot vt include arvd maheim fiber tachycardia antidromic avrt using a right sided axillary pathway and vt in patients after repair of tetralogy of fallow intracellular calcium overload is thought to be the mechanism which enhances function of sodium calcium exchanger thereby increasing inward sodium current and delayed after depolarization which initiate tachycardia cyclic amp regulates intracellular calcium increased levels of cyclic amp will increase intracellular calcium levels adenosine acts by lowering cyclic amp concentration beta blockers act by inhibiting adenylate cyclase which mediates the synthesis of cyclic amp verapamil has its action by inhibiting l type calcium channels these are the mechanisms by which these drugs are effective in rvot vt rvot vt occurring in repetitive runs having left bundle branch block morphology and inferior axis rvot tachycardia in children responsive to adenosine has been described in these children after termination of tachycardia with adenosine Verapamil was used effectively for prophylaxis against recurrence. Beta blockers verapamil or diltiazem can control RVOT VT with about 25 to 50 percent efficacy. Class 1A, 1C, 3 including amiodarone have been tried in the treatment of RVOT VT. Radio frequency catheter ablation has cure rates of 90 percent and is the preferable option. given the young age of patients with rvot vt but some of the fossae can have an origin very near the left main coronary artery and caution is needed while ablating these fossae to prevent damage to the left main coronary artery simultaneous coronary angiography is needed to identify the relation of the mapping catheter to the left main in these situations left ventricular outflow tract vt is characterized by s waves in lead one an r wave transition in v1 v2 and constitutes about 10% of outflow vt there are two varieties of lvot vt supravalvular and infravalvular absence of s wave in v5 v6 is suggestive of supravalvular origin while the presence of s wave in v5 v6 indicates infravalvular origin there is a risk of left main coronary artery occlusion while ablating lvot vt Hence coronary angiography before during and after ablation is recommended. The ablation catheter tip has to be kept 1 cm away from the ostia of the coronary arteries. 
idiopathic left ventricular tachycardias or verapamil sensitive fascicular tachycardias. Three types are described. RBBB left axis pattern originating from left posterior fascicle. RBBB right axis pattern originating from left anterior fascicle and left fascicular tachycardia with normal axis. ILVT can be terminated with intravenous verapamil. Long term therapy with verapamil is also feasible. Radio frequency catheter ablation is highly effective in those with severe symptoms. Identifying the focus of ablation can be achieved by the recognition of Purkinje potential, late diastolic potential or earliest ventricular activation. Purkinje potentials are high frequency short duration potentials preceding the QRS complex. They are also called P potential and diastolic potential. Purkinje potentials can be recorded both in sinus rhythm and during VT. Pacing at sites of earliest P potential produces QRS identical to that of clinical tachycardia. They occur 30 to 40 milliseconds before the VT QRS complex. Primary ablation of ILVT has been suggested by some authors because fascicular VT is sometimes difficult to induce despite pharmacological provocation. Primary ablation has a higher success rate, lesser procedure time, lower fluoroscopy time and requires lesser number of RF energy deliveries. Catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is a bidirectional polymorphic VT which is induced by exercise or catecholamine infusion. Family history of premature SCD and stress related syncope is obtained in about a third of patients. Exercise or acute emotion triggers the syncope in CPVT. Symptoms typically manifest in childhood. CPVT has a genetic basis with 5 genetic types described so far. Rhinoidin receptor 2 mutation is transmitted as an autosomal dominant trait, while cal sequestrin mutation is transmitted as an autosomal recessive variety. These two are designated as CPVT1 and CPVT2. Three other genetic types, CPVT3, CPVT4, and CPVT5, have also been documented. CPVT has been discussed in detail in another video on this channel. Beta blockers are the preferred therapy in CPVT. ICD may be required in 30% of patients, but a word of caution is needed since there is a risk of electrical storm with ICD discharges which can cause an emotional stress and a vicious cycle of CPVT and shocks. Brigada syndrome is characterized by an apparent RBBB pattern with ST elevation in V1 to V3 associated with life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias, typically polymorphic VT. There is a tendency for familial occurrence and it is associated with SCN5A mutation and several other mutations. Loss of the action potential dome in the epicardium but not endocardium causes the right precordial ST elevation in Brugada syndrome. Implantation of a cardiovascular defibrillator is the only effective treatment though quinidine has been suggested in addition. There are at least 16 genotypes of long QT syndrome LQT1 to LQT3 as per OMIM database. Phenotypically, LQT1 has broad-based T-waves with indistinct onset while LQT2 has bifid T-waves and LQT3 a long isoelectric ST segment. First and foremost in the treatment of long QT syndrome is the exclusion of acquired LQTS which is much more common. Avoidance of QT prolonging drugs is essential. Beta blockers are the most useful therapy in LQTS. ICD placement along with beta blocker therapy is the best option for secondary prevention in a case of long QT syndrome with history of arrhythmic syncope. Sodium channel blocking drugs like ranolazine, maxillotine and flecainide have been used in the treatment of LQT3 which is due to sodium channel SCN5A mutation. Here are the first set of references on the topic. Second set of references are here. Here is one more journal reference. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates 
and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.